Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be talking about Q code in aviation. Q codes concerning both altimetry and navigation. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video, should you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. We will start by taking a look at altimetry first. Altimetry refers to the subject of altitude measurements. For ease of understanding, let's tackle some terminology first. Altitude is the vertical distance above mean sea level. Height is the vertical distance above ground or terrain. Elevation is the vertical distance of a point on the ground from mean sea level. This picture will help you visualize the three words and uh, their meaning. Now that we understand the difference between altitude, height, and elevation, let's move to the Q codes. First and the most important one that you will be hearing every single flight is Q and H. Please keep in mind that the three letters Q and H do not actually stand for anything. Q and H is the sea level pressure setting in hectopascals or millibars or inches of mercury, depending on what unit the country you operate within chooses. So the Q and H is a value either reported in the METAR or broadcasted in ATIS or communicated by ETC to pilots. This value, when entered into the altimeter scale, your altimeter will read your altitude above mean sea level. Also know that when you are sitting on your airplane on the apron and you set your altimeter to the local Q&A setting, your altimeter will read your elevation. Like we have said earlier, the elevation is the vertical distance of a point on the ground from mean sea level. Please keep in mind that surface pressure is constantly changing. Therefore, if you do not periodically update your QNH, your altitude profile will fluctuate. This is dangerous as you may drop below your minimum safe altitude. Now, here's a question. Let's suppose your airport elevation is 50 feet above mean sea level, and for some reason you are unable to get the QNH. Say there is no means of getting that QNH. How do you figure out what is the QNH? The answer is pretty easy. All you have to do is track the process backwards, meaning that we know that when we set the QNH value in the altimeter, the altimeter reads elevation if we are on the ground and altitude if we are airborne. Since we are on the ground and we know that our the airport elevation is constant, in this example 50 feet, then we twist the altimeter knob until the altitude reads 50 feet and whatever the pressure value reads, that becomes the local QNH setting. Next, QFE. Again, the three letters themselves do not stand for anything. QFE pressure setting is the value that corresponds to height above ground. This means when we set the QFE into our altimeter, the altimeter will read 0 feet when on the ground or when on the apron. QFE is rarely used in the, in the airline industry nowadays, but it might be used by aerobatic pilots in air shows. Please note that airports that are exactly sea level, the QFE and QNH will be at the same value. However, if the airport is at a certain elevation, in this case the QFE will be lower. The reason is that the higher we go up in altitude, the pressure drops, and since QFE is a pressure setting, it also drops. Next one, QNE. QNE, also known as pressure altitude setting, QNE is the altitude above 1013 hectopascals reference. When you set your altimeter to 1013 or to 2909 or 2 inches of mercury, your altimeter indicates pressure altitude. QNE, or standard pressure setting of 1013 hectopascals, is the altimeter setting to be used when flying at or above the transition altitude. Last one is QFF. QFF is not used in aviation, it is rather used by meteorologists. The best way to explain QFF is to look at this picture. The QFE, if reduced to mean sea level using standard atmospheric values or ISA, we get the QNH. However, if we reduce the QFE using the actual atmospheric conditions and temperature lapse rates, we obtain QFF. Let me put it this way, QNH is sea level pressure based on standard lapse rate. QFF on the other hand, is the actual sea level pressure based on actual lapse rates. Don't focus too much on QFF as it is not used in aviation and probably you'll never ever hear about it. Alright, before we move on to the navigational Q codes, let's have a look at this animation as a summary of what we have just discussed. You may go ahead and take a screenshot and keep it with you if you ever needed to remember which one is which later on, even though I believe after this video you will never ever confuse them again. Alright guys, now let's jump to the navigation Q codes. When it comes to navigation, there are four Q codes every pilot needs to know. 
however, only two of which are commonly used nowadays. And by the end of this part, I will give you a trick on how to remember the difference between them and never confuse them again. First one is QDM. QDM, again, it doesn't stand for anything. QDM is the magnetic bearing to the station. What do we mean by station? Well, a station is a nav aid facility. It could be a VOR, an NDB, an RNAV waypoint, or even an airfield. So the reciprocal of QDM is QDR, the magnetic bearing from the station. Okay, for now, let's think of them. QDM is a magnetic bearing to the station, QDR, magnetic bearing from the station. From or radial, radiates away, uh, whichever way you want to think of it. Let's break them down for ease of understanding. Supposedly, we have an aircraft on a northerly heading of 360. What heading it needs to fly to go directly to the VOR on the left? If you said westerly, say 270, then you're right. 270 is the bearing from the aircraft to the VOR. Therefore, 270 is the QDM. Meaning, 270 will take us directly to the VOR from the current position of the aircraft. Okay? Now, let's look at the reciprocal of QDM, which is QDR. QDR, like we said before, is the magnetic radial that radiates away from the station. In our example, if the QDM is 270, which will take us to the station, VOR in this case, then QDR is simply 090, which is the reciprocal. So the aircraft is on the 090 radial from that VOR. So the radial is the QDR. Let's have a look at another example. The aircraft is northwest of the station. Find the QDR. To find the QDR, all you need to do is basically figure out what radial you are on, and that becomes your QDR. In this example, the aircraft is on 345 radial, so the QDR is 345. Now, if we would like to fly to this station, we will need to fly the QDM, which is the reciprocal of 345. That is, if you had said 165, then you're right. So therefore, 165 will take us directly to the station. Now, one more thing you need to keep in mind is that QDM and QDR are based on magnetic north, meaning the magnetic bearing, they are both magnetic bearings, if you need the true bearing to or from the station, then we are talking about QTE and QEG. Similarly to QDM, QTE is the true bearing to the station, and QUG is basically true bearing from the station. As I have said in the beginning of this part, QTE and QEG are hardly ever used uh, practically. However, you still need to know the difference between them for your ATPL written exams and ground school. Now, here's a small trick that might help you to remember them. QDM, M, is for magnetic and home. So you go home on a magnetic bearing. QDR, R, is a radial, radiates away from the station. And they are both magnetic. As for the true, QTE, T, is true bearing to the station. If you remember these three, the last one be becomes the QUG, and it is the reciprocal of QTE, as simple as that. All right. This brings us to the uh, end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until the next video, see ya.